Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our sem seminar on the economics of platforms. Uh, I have the honor to moderate uh, today's uh, seminar. Uh, we'll have uh, Tiffany Tai present her work on steering via algorithmic recommendations. Uh, and then Daniel Ershov will take uh, five minutes to uh, discuss um, the paper. Um, the structure of the, of, the, of the seminar is 40 minutes for the presenter, five minutes for Daniel uh, for the discussant, and then we have five minutes of Q&A. If you have clarifying questions during the presentation, feel free to write them in the chat and I will uh, interrupt Tiffany as she goes um, so that we can ask those clarifying questions. If you have much broader questions, keep them for the Q&A at the end in the last 15 minutes, okay? Um, so, and, and, and another um, thing, um, if you can, you don't have to, but if you can keep your video on, it may feel more like a seminar um, for, for the speaker. And without further ado, I'll leave it to Tiffany uh, to share her slides and introduce her work. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm to, uh, presenting a paper on steering, and this is joint work uh, with Nan Chen, who is currently at the Department of Information System at NUS. Okay, so um, algorithmic recommendations are becoming an important tool of uh, information intermediation for many platforms. And it is becoming more and more prevalent and may have a large impact on consumers. Uh, for example, 80% of the movie watched on Netflix are coming from these recommendations generated based on big data and machine learning methods. And at the same time, we also see these large internet platforms develop vertical market structure, or in other words, a dual role meaning that they are not only the information intermediary, but also players in the related market. Um, and this dual role can potentially create a incentive conflicts between the platforms maximizing incentives and how they use the tools for information intermediation. And one example would be that uh, Google was accused for its search ranking bias that potentially favor its own affiliation. So this paper is, is trying to understand empirically uh, whether and how this dual role may affect the behavior and quality of algorithmic recommendations. And our empirical context is uh, Amazon.com, uh, which is uh, Amazon marketplace in the United States. And Amazon is known for having a dual role so it owns the marketplace and guided consumer using product recommendations. But it is also one of the retailers in some of the product markets. And previ previously, when I presented the paper, when I mentioned uh, Amazon as the retailer, uh, many people will first think of Amazon's private brand. So as you can see from the graph, for example, uh, Amazon offer its own uh, a brand uh, of battery, Amazon Basics. Um, and this product is only sold by Amazon. But Amazon also sell other uh, non-private brand product together with uh, some other third-party sellers. For example, they also sell a Duracell. Okay. Um, but Amazon does not sell all the battery. So they, um, some of the battery are only sold by third-party sellers. And here, due to our identification strategy, in this paper, we won't focus on Amazon's private brand product, but as you can see from the table, um, the pro uh, this market only account for less than 5% of Amazon's first party sales. And we will focus on uh, the non-private brand product where Amazon is selling the identical product together with third party sellers. And this market also account for more than 90% of Amazon's first party sales. So here we mainly focus on the case A and B, uh, which we call then Amazon selling market and third party only market. Uh, we can also see these two markets as um, integrated and non-integrated markets. 
Okay. And Amazon has millions of products on the platform. So it is important to use on-site recommendations to guide consumers. And it has been shown that 30% of the page views are coming from these on-site recommendations. And Amazon has a different on-site recommendations with different names. And in this paper, we focus on uh, the recommendation called uh, Frequently Bought Together. And I will call it FBT from now on. And the figure on the slides illustrate uh, how FBT works. So the first product, we will call it a uh, referring product, which is the product that consumer is currently looking at. Okay, and the third, uh, second and third products are uh, uh, we will call it recipient product, which are the product recommended by referring products. And um, each referring product can only recommend maximum two products. Um, and a product can receive different FBTs from a different recipient products. So a popular product can receive more than 10,000 FBTs. And here also, uh, we would like to know that the FBT are made on the product level. So it's not recommend to a specific sellers. So consumer can choose to buy from all the sellers if they click the FBT. Okay, and FBT also um, are generated based on item to item collaborated filtering, meaning that they, uh, the recommendation only depends on the referring product. Okay, so we also check uh, whether the FBT would differ using different devices, and we do not see FBT uh, changes under different devices, uh, account, or uh, browsing history. And let me just give a simplified example on you know, why Amazon as the retailer may lead to economic incentive to steer. But of course, the real world will be much more complicated and uh, many variables like referral fee might be endogenous. Okay, but let's consider the same product with the same prices and popularity. But the first case is that the product is sold by Amazon together with some third party sellers. In another case, case two, is that uh, the product is only sold by third party sellers. Okay, and here if consumer purchase from Amazon, the platform can earn the full retailing profit. Okay, and if consumer purchase from third party sellers, the platform can earn, only earn the referral fee, which on average is around 15%. So the platform actually earn a higher profit when it is the seller itself, as long as the share of a uh, platform's sales are positive. So if we are, we are thinking that the platform is allocating the limited slots of FBTs to maximize its profit, it will be more likely to recommend Amazon selling product, which give the platform a higher profit. So we will call this uh, steering because the recommendation depends on seller identity and is not completely driven by consumer preference. And under, under this example for a given product, conditional on prices and sales, the probability of getting recommended will be higher if Amazon is one of the sellers. So, and this will be the uh, key prediction we would like to test uh, empirically. So, so this Tiffany, this is a perfect, this is a perfect way, uh, time to stop. Uh, Jacques has a, a question, a clarifying question. Wouldn't the cost of Amazon be higher when it is selling the product? Uh, so here we only kind of thinking about this is like uh, the margin, right? And um, the cost of Amazon and third party seller, which one is higher? Um, it is not, it's not very clear to me, right? Um, so but uh, Jacques, yeah. would you like to, to unmute yourself and clarify your question? Yes, so, so I don't understand because you're saying that here you, you're saying that the revenue of uh, Amazon is bigger. Basically, if I understand well your computation, the revenue of Amazon is bigger when it's selling directly. But right, the yeah, you should also consider. The right. costs well, are going to be higher because 
I mean, for instance, if a third party uh, uses uh, Amazon logistics, it, it's also paying Amazon for the logistics and so on. So I don't understand what we're supposed to get from. Why are we supposed to understand that Amazon makes more profit when it's selling directly? Right. So in, yes, uh, here we kind of make a simplified assumption that there's no cost, right? But indeed, kind of uh, Amazon will incur some cost of uh, fulfillment or shipping or even the production, right? So, um, so here we well, we didn't um, take the cost into account. Right. But if you think about why Amazon will enter the market in the first place, of course, there's a profit for entering. Right. If, if actually only third party seller sales will generate a higher profit, Amazon will not choose to enter in the first place. Right. So here we kind of um, thinking that Amazon still earn a higher profit, even with some cost. But do we know that? I, I, I uh, thought this wasn't, from what I'd read, I thought it wasn't clear that Amazon was making more profit when it was selling directly than when it was going, when it was third parties. Um, because we don't really observe the cost, so we cannot, uh, you know, say that 100% so, sure. So right? let, let, then I promise that's my last question, but in your uh, empirical work, do you assume that Amazon makes more profit when it's selling directly? Uh, so we tried to identify steering and we didn't try to kind of um, uh, make any assumption on the cost, cost okay. side, right? So we kind of saying the steering is driven by uh, because Amazon is earning a higher profit, right? But I think, um, yeah, maybe we need to be a bit more careful on this argument, right? I, yeah. Great. Right. Let's we can we can bring it up back in the in the final discussion. Gary has another question around the costs. I'll just mention it, but maybe we can bring it to the to the discussion later. Shipping time and costs can be quite different when purchasing the two products. Right. Okay. So um, so this paper would like to ask: um, Does Amazon recommend uh, Amazon selling products over third party only products? And basically we would like to identify whether there's a bias in algorithm make recommendations. Um, however, it is a bit challenging to clearly identify the bias and this will require a causal analysis. And suppose we find a steering, um, what is the effect on consumers and third-party sellers and overall efficiency? And answering this can give an uh, implication on policy design. Um, and maybe it might seem natural for to finding that, that a firm maximizes profit, but it's actually not very clear whether the steering will actually happen. Okay, so first we really uh, we don't really observe the algorithm. So uh, because algorithm is not available to the public or the government, and even if the code is available, it's not easy to understand the algorithm's objective. And even if the steering may lead to a higher uh, short run profit for Amazon, the, the platform may not do so if you worry about uh, the steering may lead to a re regulatory or reputational change in the long run. However, this incentive may also depend on whether the algorithm um, are transparent or not. So overall, we think um, this is an empirical question and that's why we take an empirical approach and try to identify steering using uh, research design and causal analysis. So let me briefly describe our approach. We first collect large data in high frequency. We collect data that covers 6 million products that have more than 100 customer reviews at the time of data collection. And we track each product's prices, uh, sales ranks, and recommendation records over time. And our data will have two main variations. So first we uh, have variations in product recommendations. So for a given referring product, it may recommend different recipient products over time. And this variation allow us to identify, estimate the uh, effect of FBT on recipient sales. And the second, um, which is the crucial variation in our data is the variation in Amazon's presence within product over time. And this temporary variation uh, is driven mostly by Amazon stock out 
or re-entry after the Stargau event. And this variation allows us to identify whether the probability of receiving FBT would depend on Amazon's presence or not. And this figure illustrates our identification strategy. So uh, Amazon uh, selling product has both Amazon's offer and third-party sellers offer on the product page. And when Amazon is out of stock, the same product is still available to purchase from third-party sellers. And we will examine whether the recipient product receives fewer recommendations during uh, this uh, stockout period, conditional on prices uh, and sales. And let me briefly um, summarize our main finding. Um, so first, uh, we, we, we just simply compare um, the uh, summary statistics, and we found that uh, Amazon selling product received 1.5 additional recommendation than third-party uh, only product. However, this does not directly suggest steering um, because whether Amazon sells a product is not rendered. Right? There could be like unobserved product features that make Amazon product receive more recommendations and are correlated with Amazon's entry decisions. For example, Amazon is more likely to sell a popular product or a product that are more complementary to others. So therefore to identify steering, we use within product variation in Amazon's presence by comparing the same recipient product with and without Amazon as the retailer. And we found that controlling for prices and sales, the same recipient product is 8% less likely to be recommended during, uh, during uh, Amazon's stockout period. And note that this is unlikely to be driven by product availability because the same product is still available to purchase from third-party sellers. We will also show more robustness check later when we discuss the results. Okay. And Ifini, uh, also... Sorry, quick yes. question from Luis. Uh, how important is that 1.55? So what's the baseline? Uh, the on every number of recommendations. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I for, forgot a bit uh, how, what's the percentage uh, here. Let me look at the summary statistic very quick. Uh, so on average, a product will receive about one recommendation. So it's actually quite big, it's more than 100% so, uh, than the mean. Got it, thank you. Okay, and the second result is that uh, we try to provide evidence that the steering is consistent with the platform's uh, profit maximizing incentive. Okay, so uh, we found that there's more steering in the product guide category where recommendation can generate more sales. And we also examine the in uh, efficiency in order to um, understand the policy implications. So we found that recommending third party only product can generate more sales than recommending Amazon products. So this implies that the platform is not uh, allocate recommendation to maximize the total sales. And the steering could pot potentially be harmful to consumers and third party sellers. Um, but of course, this will depend on some assumptions. And I will discuss the assumption in detail uh, later when we get to the uh, last result. Um, let me briefly uh, summarize the literature. Um, so this paper is mainly related to three strands of literature. Uh, first, it's, it is related to empirical paper um, anti-competitive effect of vertical integration. So uh, we can see the platform's dual role as a type of vertical integration. And the anti-competitive effect of vertical integration could come from a market foreclosure, right? And we can see the steering as a special case of information foreclosure. Um, and this could be particularly important for digital platforms. And the paper is also related to empirical and theoretical work on digital platforms, information intermediation. And most of the work focus on recommendation system and search design. And this paper is also related to work on uh, algorithmic bias. Um, so let me kind of talk about data in detail. So we tracked the, um, the lowest price 
among all offers of each product over time. And we also collect a sales rank, which measures the relative ranking of a product within its category. And we follow previous work and use sales rank as a proxy for sales. And these prices and sales data are updated daily and allow us to um, track the real time change in price and sales. And then we will merge the data with our FBT records. Hey, Fanny, quick you, question. Yes. Quick question. How do you record the FBT records? Um, in the next slides. So um, because you know, we have some technical difficulties, so our FBT are not as frequent as prices and sales. So overall, we for, uh, collect five rounds of FBT over three months. Okay. And over the five rounds, about 2% of the products experience at least one change in Amazon's presence. And we check that most of the variation in Amazon's presence is temporary. So we are not capturing the effect of Amazon's permanent exit in the market. And we also find that half of the pairs of re referring and recipient product experience at least one change in the recommendation pattern. Okay, and the table shows the summary statistic of our data. So the panel A um, shows all the data in the sample. And overall, we have more than uh, 6 million products. And here, the FBT received uh, means uh, the number of recommendation a product receiving. And many products actually receive no recommendations. And some products can receive more than 10,000 recommendations. And FBT initiated means the number of recommendations a product giving other products. And the number is between zero to two due to uh, the capacity constraint of FBT. And panel A um, shows the summary statistic for, for product that receive or initiate at least one recommendations. And in this case, we have about 4 million products left. Okay, so by comparing like um, the sales rank, um, in panel A and B, we found that more popular product, which means that they have a lower sales rank, are more likely to uh, get recommended. Okay, so <clears throat> we first just compare the number of recommendation received and initiated for Amazon selling product and third party only products. And we do so by comparing the sales rank decile so that we are comparing the FBT conditional on uh, popularity. And here we found that uh, Amazon selling product uh, received more recommendation than third party only products. And this is consistent across uh, sales rank decile. But the difference in uh, FBT initiated, which is the red dots are not very large. However, here we are just simply compare the average statistic across products. And it could be that Amazon uh, choose to sell products that are more likely to get recommended. Uh, basically, we are worried about whether Amazon's presence is random or not. So by comparing across product tell us that Amazon selling product receive more recommendation, but this does not directly suggest steering because the effect uh, is not causal. So the next step we will conduct within product uh, analysis by using the variation in Amazon's presence within product over time. So the figure illustrate our identification strategy. So first we construct a balanced panel of referring products and recipient products that ever appear in our five rounds of data. And, and given a pair of products, over five rounds, we may observe Amazon sells the in the recipient market or does not sell due to out of stock. We can therefore compare the probability of getting recommended under these two scenarios for the same pair of product. 
By doing so, we are not comparing the same, uh, we are comparing the same product. So we do not need to worry about many unobserved product level characteristics that are correlated with Amazon's presence. So we will run the regression on the slides to um, uh, estimate the steering. So the dependent variable is an indicator of whether referring product is recommending recipient product at the time T. And the independent variable plot recipient is an indicator of whether Amazon is present in the recipient market at time T. And we control for a product pair fixed effect and category day fixed effect. So in this case, the coefficient of a plot recipient theta is identified by the variation in Amazon's presence within product pairs over time. So the theta therefore will measures for a given, for the same a recipient product, the increase in probability of getting recommended when Amazon sells. Again, by comparing the same product over time, we also do not need to worry about the observed product characteristic that can bias the theta. So the table um, shows our estimation result. So uh, the theta here measures the degree of steering. So the higher the theta, it means that Amazon's presence will result in a higher probability of getting recommended. And for column two and three, we control for real-time sales and prices into the regression. And here the coefficient are all around 8%. So, okay, so this means that for a given recipient product, Amazon's presence increased the probability of getting recommended by 8%. And of course, um, even our measure on steering is comparing the same product. There might be some um, other omitted variable that can be correlated with Amazon's presence and lead to a bias in theta. Um, so let me briefly discuss uh, some potential and important omitted variable uh, that people care the most and how we rule out these uh, channels. Okay, so first, of course, it's possible that consumers uh, prefer to buy from Amazon, right? So we might worry that there's a decrease in sales af after Amazon is out of stock. Um, and this could potentially explain uh, the decrease in FBT. But since we observe the real-time sales rank, uh, we can control for the real-time sales rank in the regression. So in this case, we do not need to worry about the changing sales that are correlated with Amazon's presence uh, is the source of omitted variable bias. Tiffany, because before you get to other um, uh, uh, concerns, Ananya has one. Not sure whether this is happening, but could it be that the algorithm just has access to finer information just because it is a product that is sold by Amazon um, in terms of what gets fed into the system? Uh, sorry, I. I so I there. Yeah. Ananya, would you like to uh, add color to your question? Yeah, just just that uh, you know information is being fed into the algorithm, and since it's like an in-house product, they just have a lot more details on the product as opposed to some third-party product. You, you know, based on the systems that are in place. Right, but here we are comparing the same product. I right? only depend on whether Amazon sells or not. So if Amazon just have the detail, it should not temp the FPT should not temporarily change. Okay. Good. Thank you. And then Clara has a question about your data scraping, data collection. Uh, was it done with a browser where history, cache, and cookies have been deleted? Because otherwise, you may risk having personalized results, which are affected by your searches. Right. So um, the the we we actually try like different devices and like with different browsing history, but we do not really see FBT uh, change um, with the under different devices. So kind of like um, this kind of recommendation is not like personal, like uh, in our experiment. Experiment. Thank you. Okay. So. 
let me keep um, um, discuss other like potential concerns. Okay, and the second one is that people usually will worry there's a shipping charge from other sellers after Amazon is out of stock. And we show that the shipping charge need to be very, very large in order to explain the 8%. And, and we also still find a positive uh, effect uh, when we, own, uh, we focus on the market that has at least one uh, seller who offer free shipping using a uh, fulfilled by Amazon services. And third, we might worry that there are unobserved demand and supply shocks that are correlated with Amazon's presence. And to rule out this channel, we will run the same regression, but using third-party seller stock all as a placebo test. And we actually found um, zero effect of uh, Amazon uh, third-party seller stock all on FDT. So this suggests that the demand and supply shock are unlikely to be the omitted variable that are correlated with a seller's presence. And we also conduct more robustness check, including using logic, logistic or probability regressions or controlling for leg sales. And overall, our results um, are kind of uh, quantitatively or qualitatively similar. Tiffany, you have about 10 minutes. Yes. Okay. And as, as mentioned before, we safely run the um, regression depending on whether uh, one of the remaining third party sellers using fulfilled by Amazon services. And the FBS seller is very similar to Amazon in terms of shipping and related services. And Amazon also receive a higher referral fee from FBA sellers. And we find that the theta becomes smaller to around 6.5% for product with FBA sellers. However, we still cannot rule out steering even for product with FBA sellers. Okay, and we also invent the steering depending on the referring product's capacity constraint. And remember that each product can only recommend up to two products. So some referring product didn't utilize all the slots. So here we define the constraint product. If um, we observe the product recommend a uh, two, uh, two recipient product for at least one run in our data. And under this definition, about 80% of the referring product are constrained. We then examine whether the steering depends on this capacity constraint. And interestingly, we did not find any uh, effect uh, for the unconstrained referring product. This makes sense because this product did not fully utilize the two slots in the first place. It is likely that there are no other product to replace the existing FBT. Otherwise, the referring product should recommend other product in the first place. And our steering effect is mostly driven by the referring product with capacity constraints. In the next step, we would like to understand what um, the effect of steering on consumers and other sellers. So we first try to understand whether the FBT changes recipient sales. We will call this measure recommendation effectiveness. And the figure shows how we identify the effectiveness Again, for a given pair of recipient and referring products, over five rounds of data, recipient product may recommend the recipient product in the pair or recommend other recipient product. We then measure the change in correlation between the sales of the two products under these two scenarios and see whether recommendation significantly change the sales or not. So we will run the regression on the slides to measure the effectiveness. So the dependent variable is the log of recipient product sales. And the independent variable is the log of referring product sales and its interaction with um, whether the referring product is recommending the recipient product in the real time. And the if coefficient of the, yes. A uh, question from Eva, does Amazon have an incentive to smooth demand or sales of a product over time? So does it suffer some reputational loss if at some point no seller sells a product? If uh, no seller sells the product, that, that might be possible, yes. Right. Okay, so um, the in, a coefficient of the interaction turned delta measures the incremental 
correlation of the cells driven by the recommendations. And in the regression, we control for pair fixed product pair fixed fat and category day fixed fat. So again, the delta is identified by the variation in FBT within product pairs over time. And here, because we only observe the cell strength, um, previous work has approximately uh, uh, the log of cells using cell strength, the log of cell strength, and we follow the similar procedure. And the, in a constant turn in the function is not, um, it doesn't affect our result because it will be absorbed by the fixed effect. So we just choose a B equals to negative one here. And the table shows our result. So the delta which measures the effectiveness here is positive, suggesting that uh, the recommendation indeed has an impact on recipient product sales. But the magnitude itself is hard to interpret because this would depend on our choice of B for approximation. But we can actually compare with eta, which is the, you know, the sales correlation between product without recommendation, right? And then we can see that the, the delta is about 17% uh, of, the, uh, of eta. And we also examine the heterogeneous effectiveness depending on referring product's capacity constraint. And we define the constraint product as the same as before. Okay, and we actually found that um, the delta seems to make sense because delta is close to zero for the unconstrained referring product. This can also explain why they did not fully use all the slots in the first place because recommendation does not really generate more cells for the platform. And most of our recommendation effectiveness is driven by the product that uh, use all the slots. Okay, and next we want to show that the steering is consistent with uh, the platform's profit maximizing incentive. So the platform is more likely to steer when the FBT is more effective. Um, because in this case, steering can lead to a higher profit. So to examine this, we use heterogeneity across the largest 30 product categories. So we first estimate the degree of steering, which is the theta in the first regression across categories. And this figure shows our estimate for each category. And we can see that a category like movies, kitchen, or supplement have a higher degree of steering. We also examine the heterogeneous effectiveness in the same way, and which will be the delta um, in the second regression for each category. And here we can see that uh, the recommendations are most effective um, in skincare, makeup, kitchen, and dining. We then examine the correlation um, of these two estimates across product, product category. And we actually found that the two estimates are highly uh, positively correlated. So this means that there are more steering in the product category uh, where recommendation can generate more sales. And this also shows that the steering is consistent with the platform's profit maximizing incentive. And finally, we would like to explore the implication on efficiency in the last step. Okay, so to do so, we compare the recommendation effectiveness for Amazon selling products and third party only product. So we just estimate the second regression, but a lot different effectiveness for each type of product. And then we will compare the delta for Amazon selling product and third party only product. But here we have to be a bit careful because we are comparing the effectiveness across products again. Therefore, we want to make sure that we are comparing, you know, similar set of product. And the only difference is whether Amazon sells or not. Okay, so to, to do so, we will use propensity score matching that match product characteristics so that we are comparing the effectiveness for product with similar characteristics. And the only difference would be Amazon sells or not. Okay, so we match the referring and recipient product sales and number of seller in recipient and referring products market. And you can see that in the match sample, uh, the characteristic becomes more similar. So we then estimate um, the third regression using this match sample so that we are comparing the effectiveness um, um, for products with similar uh, sales and market structures. 
So the table shows um, the heterogeneous recommendation of factness. Okay, so Delta one is Amazon selling product. Delta one and Delta zero is um, for a third party only product. And column one and two are the pairs which referring product is third party only product. And column three or four is um, the pairs which referring product is Amazon selling product. But here, regardless of uh, referring products type, we found that the effectiveness is higher for third party only product than Amazon selling product. So this actually means that recommending third party product can generate more sales than recommending Amazon selling products. And we have shown in the first result that Amazon selling products are more likely to get recommended. However, this result um, also suggests that to maximize the sale, third party only product should get more recommendation in other words, the recommendation system does not seem to maximize the total sales. And to think about the implication in terms of efficiency, um, first, consumers are worse off with steering because they did not get their most preferable recommendations. And third-party sellers are worse off because their products are still away. And if, if we assume third-party sellers and Amazon has a similar cost of, of production and fulfillment, then the recommendation system may not be efficient uh, because consumers and third party seller here are worse off. Uh, what, a couple of more minutes, great. Yeah, let me conclude. So the paper provide a causal evidence on algorithm mixed steering for a large and dominant platform. And we provide an empirical framework and research design to identify uh, the bias in algorithms. And, self-preferencing behavior from observational data. And we focus on a product recommendation in this paper, but the steering could also through like other information intermediation like search ranking or seller recommendation like buy box design. And we think this framework help, help us to think about the ongoing debate on regulating a large internet platform and also the discussion relating to a platform's incentive and algorithm make accountability. And as you can see from our exercise, um, it's quite challenging to identify the bias using observational data because there are so many missing variables. Right, so the, if the algorithm make decision can be more transparent, this might alleviate many concerns we have today. And that's all for my presentation and uh, thanks for uh, listening. And I'm looking forward to your comments and also Daniel's uh, discussion.